Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us T Masso at the 1916 Company for pricing. It's in the description below. That's T Masso at the 1916 Company for pricing. This watch is a monster. It's a mechanical monster. It's a physical monster. It has monstrous capabilities and size to match. It is the Breguet Type 22. Teased in 2010, it took two full model years for Breguet with all of its might and Swatch Group engineering to get on top of all the technologies that went into this watch. The ultimate development of the 1950s origin Type 20 family, this is the most capable Type 20 series watch and most capable pilot watch Breguet has ever made. So Type 22, it's big. In steel, 44 millimeters in diameter, though it wears larger being 17.8 millimeters thick, and from lug tip to lug tip, 54 millimeters, with a 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now you can see what I mean when I talk about virtual diameter and virtual size. When stiff straps are employed, you can see that the strap conforms to the case, tracing the downward curve of the lugs, but also the curvature of the case. And because it's pressed against the case, it can't pivot the way a conventional straight spring bar strap might. I'm gonna do my best to put this on the wrist so you can get a sense of its size. I believe you need a wrist of 18 centimeters circumference or larger to wear this well. That said, 17 might be able to get away with it, but I cannot get away with this, not at 16. In profile, it is exactly as thick as it looks. It's not gonna fit underneath most cuffs, possibly to include jackets as well. That said, the strap is top quality. The staggered white and red matches the staggered white and red of the hash marks on the dial that is used in conjunction with the 30-second chronograph hand. Here, it is purely decorative, but the theme and the design parallelism is always something I appreciate. You can see this is a thickly bolstered strap with a lot of volume. It has a folded edge, and then on the bottom calf skin, you can see brand new, no crimping, no gouging, a Breguet factory strap. The buckle is substantial and it is a single fold friction fit clasp, something you'll definitely want to have as a full clasp makes it harder to inadvertently drop your watch while donning or removing it. And as heavy as this watch is, that's a serious consideration. The case design is derived from the historic Type 20s, but far more massive. There is a little bit of an inward inflection to the lug profiles, and you can see a distinction between satin finished and polished elements. There's coining in profile, though this isn't the cold rolled coining of some older classique cases. What I really like about the bezel is that the knurling is easy to grip. This is a bi-directional aviator style bezel. So while you can use it for timing, it's not a dive bezel. So this is not a dive watch, even though it's 100 meters water resistant. You use this to turn whichever direction may be quicker so you can line up with the minute hand and then you can actually time two events concurrently with the chronograph going and also the timing bezel. We'll do a loom shot here so you get a really good sense of the luminescence of this dial and it is an exceptionally luminescent dial. Take note that we do have two separate time zones. There's the one at center but then there's also the one over at let me demonstrate how this works, over at three o'clock. Now on a lot of other type 20 series watches, you may realize that that 24 hour gauge is really just an AM PM for a local time zone at center. Here you can quite easily see that they are two separate independently settable zones. So this is a true dual time watch. You can also see in the dark, if you zoom back, that the hour register is luminescent. Now there is a date down there at the bottom that could be set by advancing this hour hand forward or backwards through the date change. We have hands that are a hybrid of syringe and baton for the hour and minutes. And you can see that the depth of the dial is outstanding. It mentions base 30 up there because this is a 30 second chronograph and it's calibrated to permit easy reading of small fractions of seconds. Remember 10 Hertz is 20 beats per second and that is the potential resolution or uppermost accuracy of this chronograph system. You'll also note that like other watches using Lemagna derived base, it has a radial 60 minute hand. So this can be used for reading a radial display of the minutes. So it's very useful on that basis. So we have chronograph seconds in a 30 second format, chronograph minutes, and then chronograph hours. It is a flyback. So if you need to time events that occur in rapid succession, you can 
stop, reset, and restart without having to go through the full multi-pusher sequence. A flyback great for timing aviation maneuvers, which generally occur bang-bang in a landing or maneuvering sequence. What else can I say about it? Well, unlike a lot of pilot watches, the 100-meter water resistance and the screw-down crown are very serious, so on a different strap, you can take this swimming, whereas something like a Navitimer, well, no. This watch also features elements that accentuate the tritone of the dial. You can see red, white, and black, a classic sporting tritone, as often associated with motorsports as it is with aviation. Now, about this supernaturally smooth chronograph seconds hand and this 10 hertz business. So this is a 72,000 vibration per hour escapement, caliber 589F, F for flyback. While distantly Lamagna based, it's been heavily modified. It has features not commonly included on other type 20s and type 21s, like, for example, hacking seconds, which is something traditionally those watches have not had. On the reverse side, we'll get that custom rotor out of the way. You can see that the movement is an automatic wonder. It's got a 40-hour power reserve despite the super high beat rate. You can see a free-sprung balance with variable inertia bolts that do all of the timing adjustment. Uh, they move in and out on the rim to change the polar moment or turning force. That's how it's adjusted. Five positions is the high horology standard. It's also used on chronometers, so I'm happy to see it here. The free-sprung architecture means shocks are unable to change the timing of the watch. You could see the wheel adjacent as part of the chronograph system. That actually features spokes inspired by historic Breguet pocket watches. And we have an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. So this is a very resilient watch in that regard to shock, water, and magnetism. And if you look very closely, you could see that the escapement is also out of silicon, although it does have conventional pallet jewels. This minimizes the need for lubricants, reduces rotating and reciprocating mass, and improves performance overall. So lots to love there. Against the ear, you really hold it up and you hear something that sounds more like a hum than the tick of a watch. It's a very unique experience. There's a lot to love in this watch with a ton of capability. All of this pivoting on 27 jewels, a timepiece that, frankly, if it were made by Richard Mille, would cost it deep into six figures. Reach out to Team Osso at the 1916 Company for purchase and pricing details.